they sign Gaza, don't they? I'm like, what the what the hell's going on here? So I, I remember, you know, just signed Gaza uh, on the Friday, I think. So I've come into the dressing room, playing at home, pre-season friendly against somebody. I've walked to the dressing room. Gaza sat there. I'm sat next to him. He's in the dressing room. He's got a fucking fag on. He's just smoking. And everyone's just sat, everyone's just fucking sat there, like, just like awestruck. And I'm sat there and I'm just, I've gone, all right. Oh, gas going, mate. I was like, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> just like in utter shock. And then we, I've never met the guy before. Like within five minutes, he's telling me his old, he's telling me his old life story. He's telling me how he's paying fucking 30 grand a month, mate, and it's the fucking Cheryl and fucking this is happening and he's addicted to Red Bulls. And I'm going, what the fuck's going on? Like, this is fucking unreal. This is not, this is not happening. So um, anyway, that game, game was out of the way. Training this because again, Steve Evans, uh, another character, you know. And after that game, normally, you know, managers give a debrief. And after the game, and I thought I did all right. And he's going around, I'm giving every player a mark out of 10 and going through like a detailed analysis of him. So he's going around six, seven, seven, blah, blah, blah. I guess to me, I'm thinking, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll put on eight today. Six could do better, fucking blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, fucking hell. What's this guy fucking going on about? I was in there for about an hour after the game thinking, what kind of fucking debrief is this? So anyway, training in the, in the next week. And we trained at a, at a nice training ground, really. And this was before the first game of the season. We're playing a, and and obviously Gazza's, Gazza's around. And, I've just, and at the time, um, you'd finish training or whatever and... and Gazza, like I say, he's always carried weight, but he was fucking ripped up. He was, he was shredded up. So I'd go to the gym with him and just, just chatting to him or whatever, doing some weights and saying, fucking arm, you got so lean or whatever. He said, well, I don't eat anymore. I was like, what the fuck? What do you mean you don't eat anymore? He said, what have you had to eat today? It was like two jelly babies. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fucking laughing. But I'm going, what the fuck? He says, yeah, yeah. He said, obviously, um, I, I don't eat anymore. Obviously, because I, I don't want to put this weight back on. I said, so... What will you have to eat later? He said, well, I've had two jelly babies now. He said, I'll get home later. He said, I might have a piece of chicken and then some more jelly babies later. And it was, it was, it was, it was bad to see because it, it was like um, he had no confidence. He looked like a, a, a broken man. You know, he was saying that he was, he was going to the prior for addiction for drinking Red Bulls. He was saying he was drinking 25 to 30 Red Bulls a day. And I'm like, fucking Jesus Christ. This guy's like a fucking living legend. He just got um, a sponsored Merc from the, the company in, in Boston. And he just pulled through the dressing room. He's like, lads, he said, uh, I don't drive. He says, but, sorry, but if anyone wants to fucking borrow the Merc, just take it. I'm like, what the fuck? The guy just didn't have a care in the world. He said, yeah, if you, anybody needs any money or anything, just, just let me know and I'll, I'll help you out or whatever. And just like, how can a, a superstar you know, be so kind and, you know, we're, we're, we're lower league football players. They don't know us from Adam. And it was just like a, a breath of, not a breath of fresh air. It, it was unbelievable to be around, but so sad at the same time. You know, just to see somebody that, that low. He was obviously having issues with his weight and things like that. And you just think, you know, and you see him now and you think, you know, where was the support for him? You know, who, 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 was, who was helping him with his addictions and his, his, his mental issues and his problems and you know I look back now and obviously I, you, you don't see it now because you, you, your eyes weren't open you were aware but it was certainly somebody who, who, who needed the help of the PFA and, and the, the icon that he'd been you know it was sad to see that he deteriorated into not 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 a, a, a bad way but it was clearly somebody who needed some help and support and you think of all he's done at the football clubs that somebody would have took him under the wing him a decent coaching role, mentored him, and kept him involved in football because that's what he he needed to be in because that was all he all he knew. And he was just such a uh, an honest, caring man. You know, do anything for anybody, even people he'd only just met was was scary. Anyway, just going on to the football side of of um, uh, of Boston, we we played Newcastle in, in a friendly, obviously because of Gaza. We, we, we they played some of the first team with some of the kids. Anyway, we won 3 1 and I got at trick. I remember him coming over to me and saying, Stick with me, stick with me, kid, mate. I'll get you a move. He says, you, you, You've got a good future in the game. I went, Gaza, I'm 32, mate. I went, I'm fucking done, mate. I said, Fuck me. I said, Thanks for the compliment, mate, but I'm, I'm done. 